Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Spiritual Survival. This episode is going to be a little different than um, any that I've ever done. Um, this is going to be a panel discussion with um, a few other podcasters who uh, do similar podcasts to mine, and uh, some some mothers who have been experiencing um, having their children have dreams and visions. And this seems to be uh, something that's becoming more frequent, more common, and uh, not only in the church, but outside the church and around the world. And uh, I present this to you to, uh, number one, uh, consider it, uh, pray about it, and uh, I'll be joined with uh, Megan Farner, who is the, the host of the Latter-day Disciples podcast, uh, also with Matt Jepson, who has been on my podcast a number of times, um, Tiffany Barker, who has uh, has a podcast as well, and uh, she is also one whose uh, children have been having these types of experiences, uh, Polly Anderson, who's a, a mother who contacted me and wanted to uh, share some of the experiences she's having with her children and uh, Sarah Ems. So uh, uh, enjoy this uh, this episode and uh, let me know in the comments what uh, what thoughts you have and and maybe if you're aware of others having these types of experiences. Enjoy the episode. Hello everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Spiritual Survival Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Brown. Our team's mission is to help you have eyes to see the times we are living in, take unprecedented measures to prepare yourself spiritually for the events that will precede the second coming of Jesus Christ. If the mission of our podcast resonates with you, please click subscribe, like, and share this content. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Farner and I am so excited to be joining this incredible panel for a very unique discussion, a unique podcast today. Uh, we're going to be sharing this actually on multiple platforms and so we invite all of you who this crosses path with to join us as we have a bit of a sober conversation. We hope to share a voice of warning and also a spirit of love uh, above all else. I am joined today by a very unique, beautiful group of dedicated disciples of Jesus Christ who have each individually been seeking truth, uh, who have been paying attention to the signs of the times and seeking to understand and discern their meanings. And in the way that God only can, they have crossed paths with one another and have shared their stories. And in doing so, we have each come to see commonalities and threads of truth that have been compounded now by three, four, and five witnesses. Today, we are going to be sharing some very sacred things, including individuals' dreams, visions, personal revelation that has been received. And we do not do so lightly. We understand that these things, first and foremost, are for us individually and for our family. Um, at the same time, we feel compelled, as I mentioned, to raise a voice of warning and to invite you to first listen to our message and then to take it to the Lord and to discern further if perhaps there is something relevant for you to understand. We do not claim special authority. We do not claim any intention other than to be as obedient as possible to the inspiration that God has given us. And the Lord has given each of us individually inspiration and collectively as a group, as we've come together, we have seen and felt the hand of the Lord guiding this conversation. So with that being said, we are going to be discussing some topics related to the end of the time of the Gentiles. And hopefully we understand this term uh, that is read about across the body of scripture, most especially in the Book of Mormon, that has to do with a period of time where the gospel of Jesus Christ has been extended to those who are less directly a part of the house of Israel. And 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been identified with that group. Uh, Joseph Smith identified us with the Gentiles. And in prophecy, in scriptures, we learn that there will come a time when the invitation of covenant to the Gentiles will be at an end. And at that time, we enter a period of transition where some few will arise from the Gentiles to become kings and queens who will nurse and serve those who will inherit the covenant opportunity, which is the Jews and the house of Israel. Uh, we have each come together tonight to declare that we believe that the time of the Gentiles is very nearly at an end. And we can discuss why we believe that is. Ultimately, we reserve the right to be wrong. And again, encourage you to seek your own inspiration and revelation on these things. However, this is the message that we feel compelled to share. With that being said, I will turn the time over to my good friend, Polly Anderson, to share some of the very sacred experiences that she has learned of, that she has received herself, that um, have helped her to identify some of the things that we believe will shortly be coming to pass, uh, figuratively and literally, uh, in different ways. So that being said, Polly. Megan, thank you so much. It is such an incredible honor to be here with all of my dear brothers and sisters in Christ who are feeling so prompted at this time to raise our voices like a trump and to share the things that the Lord has given us. And I want you all to know that as I share these things, that I know that they are true, that there is no doubt in my mind of the things that I have received. And, um, but I want you to know, I have not received these things. It, it, it has been my son and who has received these things. Um, as I prayed back in 2020 to start receiving these dreams and visions, um, I had not received any by 2022. And so I prayed to the Lord, please send them. If you cannot send them to me, send them to my son. And immediately my son started having dreams and visions. And so the one I would like to share um, is, represented, is representative of the um, time of the Gentiles being fulfilled. And um, he came to me and he said, he said, mommy, Jesus showed me a vision. And he was given a specific time frame, but I will not say the time, but I will let you know that we are entering the season thereof in which these things are going to be fulfilled. And that time um, will be the time of the eclipse happening on April 8th. So what he came to me with was he said, he said, mom, um, Jesus showed me that um, the missionaries are going to um, come home. And he said, he showed me first um, one of our nieces who is serving in um, Germany, that she got on, on that she got on a plane with all these other missionaries and she came home. And then I was shown my other niece who is serving in Minnesota and she got on a plane as well and came home. But her plane was a little bit different and she was on a smaller charted plane and she was um, sent to an airport in between Albuquerque and Santa Fe. And um, Benjamin um, was told that all of the missionaries are going to be coming home before this time where the Lord pours out his judgments. So um, I, I truly, um, when I received this from Benjamin, I knew with all my heart it was true because you cannot deny when a child comes to you and starts speaking um, prophetically. And the scripture in Joel that of your, your old men will have dreams, your young men will have visions and your sons and daughters will prophesy is true and it is happening. And so when that happens, you can't, your spirit cannot deny what is coming out of the mouth of a babe. And so I, I went to the temple and I said, Lord, please help me to understand this and give me further light and knowledge. And he did. And he specifically told me, he said, yes, Polly. This is um, what Benjamin is seeing is true. And um, what is about to come forth is that when my missionaries come forward, 
the end of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. It, it will mark the end. And when my missionaries go out again, they will not be missionaries in the same sense that they have been before. They will be the 144,000. They will be the kings and queens of the Gentiles. And they will be endowed with my power to go forth and to gather my people like there has never been a gathering before. And I want you to know that I know that this is true. And, um, and my heart rejoices in the things that the Lord is so willingly pouring about, um, pouring upon all of his children who are seeking. And, 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 and it's that simple. As soon as you seek, seek with all of, all of the energy of your heart and you pray to him and you go to him in mighty prayer to understand what is happening, he will share and he will show you that these things are about to come forth and are about to happen. And that is my really bold testimony to let you know that these things are true. And this is the season in which we are about to come upon. And my friend Tiffany has, um, um, her son has also had some dreams and visions as well. And so Tiffany, would you like to share um, something that you feel impressed to share? Sure. So your son, Benjamin, was was he six when he had that dream first? He was six, yes. Okay. So my son just turned eight. Benjamin is seven now, is that right? Yes, he's seven. Okay. Okay. So when you, uh, Polly reached out to me, um, sent me an email just kind of detailing all these things about your son and all these things about things I was reading through like, well, because my I have a little boy who's eight and a little one who's three that just fell asleep, luckily, so this is good. <laughs> but um, he, uh, so much correlation in the dreams. My son has had dreams, and my daughters too have had dreams of invasions um, on the airplanes falling out of the sky at the same time, which, you know, that's an EMP, a whole bunch of things. And I think that I think that we would be foolish to not pay attention to the things that our children are receiving because they are not destined for this celestial life. And you know it, you can feel it and they know it. And especially the, I feel like the kids under about 10, well, I have a 13 year old and she's pretty great too. So under 13 kind of get it kind of are, um, they, they just have so much faith. They can receive things so quickly and easily and understand these miracles that we're going to have, these things that are going to happen. And I also think as parents, I think it's our responsibility to be realistic with our children and help prepare. Mm -hmm. There's going to be hard times ahead. We're going to have loss. We're going to have, um, we know, prophesied plagues, earthquakes, tempests, all these things in our, our neighborhood, Matt and I are neighborhood, and in our neighborhood, we had, um, we had the earthquake in Utah back in 2020. Then we had a fire that we were all evacuated in July, June, like June 29th or something. Um, and so we, our, our kids kind of went through the steps of like, oh, this is real. This could happen. And so I think it helps. Us. Obviously, 2020, everybody lost their minds with COVID and everything. So the world went crazy. But I think it's important as parents to really be um, be wise and really prayerful about how to prepare our children because they are sent here knowing these things. Like Paul, your your son is seven and he's getting he's getting into visions and dreams. My kids have had very specific things about where tanks come from, what the invaders look like, um, languages they speak, and also protections and miracles that they've had. And knowing like uh, this tornado was coming straight at me and I prayed and it stopped. I'm like, right, that can happen. Just not like, I, I feel like encouraging that level of faith in them is so important because we know we're going to see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power the world has ever seen. And in order to get there, it has to look really scary or else it's not that big of a miracle. So I think it's important that we are um, honest with our children and very prayerful on how to prepare them and also know that they're they're built for it. They're ready for it and listen to them and encourage these things like Paul, you've encouraged us and Benjamin. I think that's so good. 
my kids know if they have a dream, they come straight to me and I'm like writing it down in my notes right away. So anyway, it was interesting to see the correlation of what your son was receiving. And I haven't, I haven't really shared my dreams, but there were so many overlaps in the things that you sent me. So the Lord is speaking and it's our job as this generation to listen and to give our children the, the respect and the understanding and also just know that they can, they can do hard things. They're made for it. And the Lord's going to help them too. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you for that. Um, I'd like to invite Matt Jepson, who's also on the call to add his thoughts and additional witnesses. We did on the Latter-day Disciples podcast, Matt and I did an episode back in uh, September or October before the partial eclipse that we had um, at the beginning of October. And uh, he's received a lot of beautiful revelation. I'd be interested to hear um, when you heard these women's testimonies, how that impacted your understanding of the eclipse and the significance of it. Um, I do think that there is a palpable air of importance to this event that I don't, I certainly didn't feel back in 2017 with the first eclipse that passed through the United States. Um, and so I imagine that those who are listening to this conversation, who listen to Polly and Tiffany, I imagine you probably feel this urgency already, even if maybe you haven't been able to put a, a name to it. So Matt, could you maybe add some detail as to, again, why this eclipse is so significant and what tie in you saw between it and what these women have shared. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's really neat to see this discussion um, come together and so many people individually feeling right now that word urgency that, and this, this feeling about this year and some of them honing in more on the eclipse and others just feeling like something, like something is ahead, something's coming. And wherever that, you know, wherever we're at, um, this is such an important time to believe in the spirit of revelation, to believe that our Heavenly Father and our Savior Jesus Christ will speak to us individually, even as he has done, you know, with, with Polly, with Tiff and with their with their children. We have the right to receive. And that, you know, that that verse, I'm just going to read it real quick in Joel, is so important about the time that we live in, the moment that we live in, it shall come to pass afterward I, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughter, daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. I'm hoping for more visions than dreams because that means that I'm not old. It's good. Um, <laughs> and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. It is an abundance of the spirit, right? And we could go all into the compensatory power that's unique to this generation. First Nephi 14, 14, the President Nelson said, He's pouring out his spirit. You, this is the time that Nephi saw when the Lord poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And we'd be um, endowed with that great power. But specific, Megan, to what you asked, you know, for me, and I won't go into detail because it, it gets to be time consuming, but back in 20, June 27th, which is an interesting date, I didn't even realize it at the time, but June 27th of, of last year, as I was seeking to do what, what, the Savior has told us to do. And, you know, this is something that I, is just so misunderstood when we think about the times we live in, we think about what's coming in DNC, for, Doctrine and Covenants 45, 39, the Savior says, that's important, shall come to pass that he that feareth me shall be looking forth for the great day of the Lord come. He that feareth me shall be looking for, forth for that day to come, even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. And they shall see signs and wonders, for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. And he goes on to talk, to talk, talk about blood and, and vapors of smoke and the things that happen next. But this is so important to recognize that the Savior saying, He that feareth me will be looking forth for that day, and they will see the signs and wonders in the heavens and the earth. And, um, and then he goes on, he says, and there's more to it, but and he that watches for me, watches not for me, shall be cut off. I felt that really strongly as I read that. And I was like, this doesn't just sound like, hey, you, you can know more than you think. You're living beneath your privileges. Absolutely true. 
but there's actually an obligation in that. There is there is something that I felt that I was supposed to actually be paying attention to those signs. And that and you know, I I don't know astronomy. I don't know there's a, a ton of things that I don't know. Um, but I felt that. And so I prayed for it and I prayed for it for a while to un- be able to understand the things that he needed me to know, whether they were um any type of sign, uh, but there was something about the heavens. There's something there. Maybe it's because of my greatest weakness, because I just really knew the least about it. I'm like, I don't know what there's a comet that's awesome. Is that the like does that mean anything? And I went through 2017 and I was like, I felt prompted to take my sons and go to see that in totality in Roberts, Idaho. And all I knew is that it was powerful. I did not understand what it was. I just felt it like that was significant. And then we go, you know, years after that. And 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 last year, um, as I was looking at what happens with those with those eclipses, and I was seeing the pattern that are that is formed, the perfect pattern of the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the top, and what it signifies that in the Talmud it means the end of the seal of the holy one. That sign, that's what that it means. And I here I'm in the Talmud, which is you know interesting how I got there, but and it's not that the, 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 the Talmud is um scripture, but it tells you what in Hebrew what that was intended and what was meant by that. That was the sign that the Israelites put on the lintel above the doorpost for protection. And then it signified judgment for those that did not have that that mark or that protection. And there's a lot to this, and I won't go into into uh, too much detail, but in the end, I saw also that the over the Americas is formed when you add to it um what happens what happened in October, the Aleph or the Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And you see layers upon layers of things from there, the first and the last. That sign is made over the United States, the Tav, and then the Aleph is made here. And then that same exact sign is made over over the Middle East, centered right over the Red Sea and over the Middle East. And the pattern is perfect. They're exactly seven ecliptical years apart from the first 2017 eclipse to the 2024 eclipse, exactly um, seven years apart, and then exactly half a time, which is an interesting phrase and concept in the in the scriptures of three and a half years, and then exactly seven years apart, that same pattern over the Middle East um, in 2027 and 2034. And so for me, the, the most important thing here for this discussion is that I, what I had, the experience that I had was not research. I, I, I witnessed to you that it was not research. And I'm a researcher. I'm a nerdy attorney. I'm a researcher. That's not how this happened. It happened in a, in a morning in a, in a spirit that completely overtook me and put Revelation, the book of Revelation in front of me, um, Isaiah in front of me, Ezekiel in front of me, the Talmud, the, the Hebrew alphabet and things that, you know, I don't know and didn't understand. I understand them a little bit better now, but I know what that meant. And, and what I know, uh, flows from that is that that's that October eclipse was significant in addition to the the beginning eclipse of 2017 and this ends eclipse uh, of 2024 coming up in April but that marked to me that Aleph or the Aleph signifies oneness with God and it, and it felt so strongly to me that was a period of time that this is a period of time for us to be consecrated to him that there is urgency and it, and if you really think about it, I, I can tell you it's so many stories so many people that during this period of time between October and and now and, and you know feeling up until April feel this urgency to be consecrated to him and are having experiences that are Abrahamic tests uh, impossible moments I call them uh, times where he is teaching us the spirit of revelation teaching us uh, the gift of prophecy for our, our own um, selves and for our sphere of responsibility and he's giving us experiences that help us to be ready to participate and not be spectators in what happens next but i know um from my experiences that the april eclipse has absolute significance and as you began this megan that feeling and that um that uh understanding that this period of the gentiles uh, you know, coming to a close. And what that means in its basis terms, right, is judgment. 
that that means judgment. And so the experiences that, that Paul has shared, that Tiffany shared, um, to me, are another witness, another layer of witness that I don't know exactly. And I always say this that I don't know that something happens right after the eclipse. I don't know that. I haven't. I haven't received that. I know that it signifies the end of that seven years. And if we look at G Egypt, it had seven years of preparation, and it was a type for what's coming. And then it had seven years of judgment. And over this land, over this uh, part of the world, I know that that second seven years that is beginning in April is signifies judgment. And that um, there's a feeling about this year after that that occurs that a lot of people have had. And I, I know what that means. I know the, period, the season that we're entering, I guess is the, the, maybe the clearest way to say it, that we are entering a new season and that it is so important right now and this is the last thing I'll say here, and I'll be quiet, but this, I just feel to invite people to between now and April, and President Nelson said, unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures to do perhaps more than you ever have in your life, to personally be yoked to the Savior, to let go of this fallen world as he invited us, to rise above this fallen world. And to live the higher and holier laws so that we are prepared. And he called upon us to be prepared to receive the Savior. Um, and he gave us an apostolic blessing to be able to do that. But he invited us to live the higher and holier laws. And what is that highest and holiest law before we, we approach the veil in the temple? But the law of consecration. To consecrate our time, our talents, everything that we have. Everything that we might be given to him and to building up the kingdom and to establishing Zion on the earth. That is an invitation that I felt personally that I need to be done with lesser things. And that can be good and better things sometimes for the best things. That in this period of time, I need to be consecrated to him. I need to let go of the world. I need to tell him I'm serious about letting go and ask him for help to change my heart and to be you know, pure in heart, to be sealed his. And, and so that's that's you know, my feeling and my invitation that this is a period of time right now. We hear these things and these, these experiences about things that are ahead. And the thing I know for sure is you cannot go wrong to consecrate yourself to the Lord in these next two months. You can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. There is, there is nothing that can harm you. There's only things that can benefit you by saying, if I feel this and I love, you know, that you said, make it in the beginning, take it to the Lord, uh, each of these things. But, Ask him, you know, what should I do to be closer to you, to thee? And and I promise he'll tell you things. Thank you, Matt. We also have on the call Sarah and Sarah, would you mind sharing some of your experiences and witness to uh, these things that we've been discussing? Absolutely. Um, so I'm really good friends with Polly. And I live in the heartland. And so as I'm listening and learning um, about the end times, you know, a lot's going to be happening in the heartland. And so um, I've always been fascinated with the second coming of the Lord. And my mother has just been amazing um, raising me that way. Um, and and so I've been doing a lot of studying as um, the Feast of Trumpets has come the Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, all of those things I wanted to learn about. And um, Polly and I really started to connect on these things. And um, she was sharing Benjamin's dreams with me. Um, I am an artist, and so I was doing a commission for her family. And it, it needed to be a very prayerful commit commission. And, um, and I hadn't done a piece in a very long time. I had lost the ability to draw. And so I was like, I don't know if I can do this, but um, I said I would I would do it. Um, and so we would pray um, and talk and then, you know, our day would go on. And then we would both have impressions that night. And the next day we'd share them. And this, that painting was done in six weeks and it was pretty big. And it was so beautiful, the inspiration that came from that. And that just linked our souls together. And um, in the way we receive revelation, we're just connected ever since then. Um, so that was about a year and a half ago. So fast forward to now, um, we still call each other and we still share what we learned the night before. And um, 
can I testify that if you have a desire to learn, the Lord isn't going to have you do it by yourself. You don't have to. Um, he will put people in your path to to go through it with you and to learn and grow. Um, say your family's not on board yet. Um, be patient. Charity never faileth. Always show love and kindness. It's really easy to have a sharp tongue and to be frustrated and resent. But if if we know that everybody has their time and their season to to know and to grow, and if we're there supporting them and loving them, um, they will end up feeling the truth of of all things. Um, and I I feel like um, what I I feel like there's a lot of people out there who are at different levels of, of believing and understanding. Um, and I just want to, want to say, just come as you are, start where you're at. Um, if you have a particle, bring that and the Lord will multiply it and, um, it will rise. And, um, he really wants to speak with us. Um, Polly is very bold and has a wonderful enthusiasm. And um, I would have dreams and I would tell her about them. And she's like, well, didn't you ask questions? And I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't think about asking questions. I just thought that's what you want to give me. So as we've been talking, she's had me be bold and ask. And, um, and it was around, um, uh, it's a young, young, and I was really um, fasting that day and wanted to seek answers. And I had learned all this stuff, you know, throughout the summer. And um, we were just really diving into scriptures, re receiving miracles daily. Anyhow, so I decided to ask um, God a question. And no sooner than that, I had this dream come before me. And it, it was of uh, um, the moon and, um, oh, and I should say the question was, what's the meaning of the eclipse? Like, I really feel like that is something very significant. Um, I've always loved to look at the stars. And so that was my question she wanted me to ask. And I really wanted to know. So I asked, what's the meaning of the eclipse in April? And, and so then it unfolded on, on Yom Kippur and, um, it was the moon and then, um, and it was very dark around it. And then I saw Jesus Christ come right in front of it and he smiled and it was a tender moment. And then his eyes were as flames and his robe turned into flames. And I was just overcome that, what if I hadn't have asked? Um, granted, I didn't know the meaning of this at the time. Um, I was just in awe over this. And uh, I'm still figuring it out um, behind me. Um, I started painting it because it's so vivid and so raw. Um, and as I've been studying, um, I... And I have a twin brother and I talk with him and he said, well, um, the eclipse casts a shadow upon everything. And, and, and that really meant something to me. Um, you think of the scriptures that talk about a type and shadow, um, opposition in all things, light and dark. Um, uh, and so I felt like the eclipse is signifying possibly, um, the moon is is kind of a partition between the separation of shadow and light, good and evil. And there's going to be a wider separation of that as um, time goes on. And that those who are on the side of light, um, there's a scripture. I don't know the reference. We'll have to get it. Um, and it basically, I think it's in Revelations, it talks about the sun being darkened, the moon being darkened, stars flying from the sky, and then you can, and then something about seeing the Lord's face. 
And I feel like those who are seeing and hearing and are in a covenant relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ, will have those blessings and will be in his rest and his comfort. It doesn't mean, you know, we'll all die. Yes, some of us will, but he's going to cover us and keep us safe. And um, I think that was my biggest hesitation to ask questions and to start learning was I just wanted to be in a safe place. And, um, you know, learning and going out of our comfort zone spiritually is it can be a little uncomfortable. Um, but it is so worth it. Like my heart just, it, it is overflowing daily. And I feel like I almost have wings some days and I see miracles all day long. And, um, it's just beautiful. So, um, I invite you to ask and seek. And if you don't know where to start, start with come follow me. Um, do not skimp on your come follow me. Um, we read in First Nephi 11, chapter 11 this week. And it was, it, as I read it, I'm like, here, here is a pattern of revelation. In verse one, it says I was pondering and, and then he got more revelation. So if you just start with what you know and ponder on that, the spirit can take that and work with that. And then um, he brought faith and repentance. And, and then the angel said, look, I'm going to show these things to you. And so we just have to have eyes to see and to look. And um, he said, behold. And so it was given to Nephi. And then Nephi received it and said, I beheld. And then at the end of the chapter of, of 11, um, it talks about Nephi says, and I saw and I bear record. And so his faith become, became sure and perfect. And, and then he was able to prophesy about it. So there was a lot of, and it came to pass in that chapter. So it wasn't easy. And I'm sure it took over, you know, many days, many moons, many months. But um, we don't know. But, um, but please start with come follow me. I feel like it's, it's pattern. The, the brethren have put it there for a reason. And those scriptures will guide us in our deepest trials and, and things will be revealed to us by the Holy Ghost. And um, so do I say the name of Jesus Christ, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> you can. No, no. You can for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Sure. All right. Our final panelist that I would like to invite to speak is Randy Brown. Randy, do you have any comments or thoughts that you would like to add? Yes, I'd love to. Thank you, Megan. I would just like to, to share how I got to this place, sitting here on this panel. Um, in March of 2020, when we had the earthquake here in Salt Lake City, um, something very powerful happened to my wife and I. Um, I. I can't describe it as anything other than a an awakening. And that awakening was so powerful that it's been with me every single day since then. And I, I prayed, you know, asking the Lord that if this is just an obsession, <clears throat> to remove it. But it's got nothing, it's been nothing but more powerful, more intense, and more urgent. Um, a month later, a few weeks later, when President Nelson spoke in April of 2020, and uh talked about learning to hear him. And he's also talked about seeking to be taught by the Lord himself. Um, it's like I, I saw deeper layers in his testimony and in his prophetic um, injunction to us. And these, these in feelings have just become more and more intense. And uh, as I've sought to be taught by the Lord, he's led us to my wife and I, to many teachers. Uh, he's led us into a deep dive of the book of Isaiah, which has been incredible because it's given me a snapshot of these end time events. So uh, we felt like we know what we're looking for. Um, and, and so as we've prepared for these things that we feel like the Lord has uh, warned us to, to prepare for and look for, um, 
we were in the temple and had a, a very unusual experience where I, f- I felt the Lord telling me to um, be even more valiant in my testimony. And I wondered how I could do that living in Utah. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, and I felt this impression to to begin a, a, a podcast, just to, just to share my testimony and to share these feelings that I'm having about where we are and this snapshot that I've been given of of these end time events. And um, I just acted on the prompting and it it just led from one thing to another. The first thing was uh, call Megan Farner. Um, And Megan helped me get started. I I couldn't have, I didn't know what to do. She, she helped me get started. Um, Next I I started seeing uh, episodes online by Matt Jepson. And I I watched all of them and many of them numerous times. And I got the impression, call Matt Jepson. (laughs) And I I called Matt and and Matt's come on and shared his testimony along with mine of the the times we're living in. And there's there's been many others, but uh, that kind of brings me to the point of about three weeks ago. Um, I went out to my car first thing in the morning and I I see that I have a call from someone with a strange area code. (laughs) And uh, so I, I called him back really quick, and it was Polly Anderson. And uh, I was on my way to the temple. And uh, we, we agreed to visit after I got out of the temple. And the things that Polly shared with me, some very detailed things from her her son's dreams and, and visionary experiences. And, and it just knocked me over with the spirit. Um, because it validated the, this snapshot of these events that we feel that Isaiah has taught us and, and these other teachers that we've been led to. Um, and that, of course, led to getting to know uh, Sarah. Um, and then when when Matt talked about the uh, <clears throat> the eclipse, you know, at first, I wasn't sure if I really believed there was any meaning there, but uh, when he spoke about these these last six months ex- since October, and my wife and I drove to Richfield, Utah, to, to watch that, uh, I just call it the Aleph, uh, the Aleph um, eclipse. It, it just, I didn't even want to really go, <laughs> but once I did, it was just such an incredible experience. I just felt like I'd almost seen the hand of God. And I called Matt when I got back and I said, Matt, I, I believe you're right. I, I think these next six months between between October and um, April are absolutely intended as a, a period of grace for us to <clears throat> seek to sanctify ourselves as much as we possibly can. And I felt the Lord say to me, and I, I don't throw this out there to, I, I'm in a unique time in my life, I'm retired. I'm a temple worker, um, so I have the time to do this, but I felt the Lord say, go to the temple every day for the next six months. And except for a couple of days where I was uh, very, very sick, I've I've done that. And uh, maybe I just need it more than most people. <laughs> maybe I need more sanctification but uh, and more consecration. But uh, it's just been mar- a miraculous experience. Um and I know that the Lord is working and preparing us for something. Uh, my wife and I pray every day to know the details of what that is. Um, but anyway, thank you for having me on the panel and allowing me to bear my testimony. Thank you. Thanks to each of you for sharing what you have so far. I have some thoughts and questions about maybe some additional topics that we can go through. Whoever feels impressed to share something, whether it be a personal experience or a revelation or, or whatever it is that the Holy Ghost inspires you to share. Um, but before we go into that, I want to highlight <clears throat> something that I hope the Spirit is communicating to those who are listening. And I know that those of us who are on this panel have certainly felt it. And that is that there is a compounding of testimonies going on at this time. And I mean on this call, I mean in this discussion, but I mean much more broadly than that as well. 
Um, you know, we are talking about the testimony of the heavens, of the planets, of the sun and the moon and the stars. We're talking about the testimonies of different cultures. Uh, one of the things that I was led to know over the last couple of months is that to Native American, different Native American nations, eclipses have always been a sign of judgment. And isn't that exactly what the Lord has impressed upon each of us, even though none of us are Native American or, or had that background, obviously, before learning that and hearing that from a separate place. Um, as I have studied and, and had my own experiences, I really do feel the testimony of, of the planets and uh, even moving beyond this interaction between the sun and the moon and the earth that we're seeing coming together at this eclipse, but seeing where things are in the heavens and realizing that the last time certain things were in the places that they are now was the time of the American Revolution. It was a time of upheaval, of of incredible change. And I think that there's an invitation that is going out at this time, again, to those who are willing to have eyes to see and ears to hear, that this is a time of great judgment and great mercy, uh, depending on where we face and where we choose to put ourselves. And so that is kind of the topic that I want to turn over to you, to each of you, if you feel impressed to share. I know that we've talked about some things, um, but what particular instances of judgment and mercy have you perceived coming? And I don't, we don't share this in any way to be fear-mongering. That is absolutely opposite of what our intention is. Our intention is to raise awareness and to let it be known that there are these things coming. And hopefully to have that feed, again, that sense of urgency in choosing to turn to the Lord. And not by feeling the weight of all the things that you don't do, but instead by just truly repenting, putting your heart on the altar and saying, Lord, I'm yours. Tell me what to do. And then doing whatever it is the Lord tells you. So not about those check boxes, but really about that consecration, that sacrifice, that obedience of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And I think that understanding some of these things can help us do that. In fact, that is one of the purposes. I think that one of the main purposes of judgment and tribulation is to encourage us to offer that that sacrifice of a broken heart so then we can move out from a place of judgment into a place where the law of mercy reigns supreme and where there are miracles, where there are spiritual gifts in abundance that we haven't seen lately. Um, so with that being said, I'll kind of go over to my panel and say, um, what are the things, and let's contrast it, both the, the, um, the dark and the light, that we can be perhaps expecting to see in the next while. Megan, can I just say, um, I feel like the Lord has been impressing upon my heart um, that right now he's in the position of where he is knocking and he is knocking loud and he is begging us to open up that door. And, and he's also begging us to run to him. He's like, do not walk. There is no longer time to walk to me. Run to me with all of your heart and come to me and come to my temple. And at that sacred place, offer up on the holy altar, a broken heart and a contrite spirit in ways you never have before so that my light can come and pre penetrate your broken heart and your contrite spirit. And so I can truly make you mine. And so I can seal upon your forehead my name. And in Revelations, it talks about how all these angels want to come down and pour out these judgments. And, and it, it, the angels say, no, don't do it yet. Do not do it yet. Because, because the Lord has to seal his people his. And at this specific time, that is what the Lord is wanting us to come and experience that with him and give everything to him so that we are his and 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 he is ours and there is no doubt there is absolutely no doubt in my mind or in the lord's mind of where we stand so that when that when he comes when that bridegroom 
bridegroom comes, we will be the wise virgin. And um, so that's what I just feel like. I feel like that the Lord is saying, Polly, cry repentance um, and repent in ways that you have never repented before. And the Lord has shown me um, in my own personal life what true repentance is like. And he has brought, as, as, as I have striven to be meek and humble um, before him, he has brought up all these past instances in my life that I didn't think I need to be, um, you know, needed to be repented of. And he's like, Polly, let me show you of this, this, and this, this, this time, all the way back in your entire life of things that you need to repent of. And so he's, 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 he's allowing me and teaching me to truly purify my heart before him so that he can sanctify my heart. Um, and it's been powerful. And I feel like what comes next as, as, as we do these things, the Lord will bestow upon us miracles and blessings and gifts that we can't even, it just, the Lord is just pouring his light and his mercy in ways that is so profound. And he wants to pour it now upon his children before these judgments happen so that we are not put in a position where our faith is paling us. He does not want us to be put in that position. And it's just like, it's like he just so desperately wants that light to come in us so that we will be children of light. And so we will not falter and that we will be the ones as everyone around us and our family members are so devastated at the things that are happening. It's like, no, we can be that beacon of light and that person whom they can turn to and, 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 and say, no, listen, this is okay. This is, this is what's supposed to happen. Let me help. Let me bear you up. But it's like he he wants to put and instill that power in each one of us. Like, and all we have to do is go to him so that we can withstand what is about to come. I love that, Polly. Like President Nelson says, tell the Lord you're serious about overcoming the world. And I think if we look at where you want to be, like the goal you want to be is to be fully sanctified, right? Completely consecrated with all of our gifts. I know for me, Randy kind of told his his background and mine was, I was in the temple in like, I think July or August. And I said, to the Lord, I want to consecrate my life. And I said, you've given me gifts and talents and I want to give them back to you. Tell me how to do that the best that I can. And instead of looking at a checklist of like, how do I get a broken heart? How do I have a contrite spirit? Okay, all these 10 things I need to go through. The number one thing is just go to Christ, number one. And don't worry about, it's like when I've been in young women's, the kids always wanted to know what's the line, right? How far can I, what's, what's modesty? What's the limits? What are your own these? And the whole thing, the best advice I ever got was actually from my mom. And she said, your job is to help them have Holy Ghost, all of that for them. Don't give them all these checklists and lines and everything. Obviously we had like for the strength of the youth pamphlet, but so much has to be dictated by the spirit. And I think we are more, um, I think I'm going to spend more time on my knees. I'm going to pray until my knees are numb. So I can just talk to the Lord and he becomes my father. Not just this far away omniscient being is your father. And you talk to him and pour out your heart to him. And then the closer we get to Christ, that stuff falls out of our lives. There's no checklist. There's no lines. It's just, we get closer to Christ. And as we become changed and who he needs us to be, and like you said, be repenting of things that you're like, I didn't even know I needed to. And you do, and you feel that cleansing and you feel the Lord approving of that and loving you. And then saying, okay, you did that. Here's the next step. Here's the next step. And we know there's going to be hard things coming. But I think it's really important to remember that in the scriptures, when those, like Lehi and Nephi in the prison, the brothers, you know, in the prison, it's a horrible earthquake for everybody else. But they are in there having one of the most sacred experiences ever. And then the walls fall down. And the sa there's just Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. They're in the fire with Christ. They're in the fire. And I just think. If we look at these things as, oh, this is a chance for a miracle. Here we go. This is going to be amazing. Instead of there's going to be earthquakes and tempests and all these things because 
we're naturally drawn to the scary stuff. We just are. And so I think it's good to look at the miracles, just fully focus on Christ. And also it's important to remember, you referenced the 144,000 a couple of times, Polly, and they are sealed in the sixth seal. Like this is the time. This is the time to prepare. It's not like stuff that's going to happen. And then we're going to feel like, oh, crap. Okay. I've, I've heard this is going to happen. I'm ready. I'm going to really real focus on my scriptures now. This is the time now. Like Matt says, this is the MTC now. And this is when we have to prepare now and give our hearts to the Lord and allow him to change them. Allow him to cut out the things of our lives that don't edify and aren't part of our consecration. And this is such an exciting time to be alive and to give all of this to the Lord and say, hey, I'm here and I know thou has given me all these gifts or what, you know, or I want to obtain more gifts and I'll give them back. And that, that has just been so powerful for me to kind of see things in a different lens and know this is going to be the most amazing time to be alive. It is so exhilarating. We just have to look past the stuff that seems scary and think there's our chance for a miracle. You can't have a miracle without looking scary. Yeah. Uh, real quick on this same point. I, and, and Tiff, you have a, a really good discussion on this um, as you talked to especially the sisters about seeing through the fear part and seeing through the calamities and seeing the millennium, seeing the second coming. I, I think that focus is so, so important that this is a time, President Nelson, he never speaks pessimistically of this, but he does speak of this, right? He says, I'm not saying the days ahead will be easy, right? But they're glorious. The future is glorious for those who are prepared. He says the future is breathtaking. He says countless privileges, blessings, and miracles that Polly and Tiff described and, and referenced there. That is what we should be looking forward to, right? And when I was having some of the experiences that I had, you know, I was put, it was put in front of me, Revelation 7, right? Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. This is that time. I, I know that this is that time. This is that time for us to be sealed his. And, you know, that's a whole discussion. But in the end, it's not complicated. It is it is simple. And I think it's so important for us to realize that um, the, the Lord, our Heavenly Father, and our Savior Jesus Christ are so much more merciful than we will ever understand mortality. There's so much more grace for us to be the laborers of the last hour or the first hour. Like, this is the time to be in and to not worry about past sins. And, and, I, and I say that in a very different context than Paul I described because what she said is absolutely right, but it, it, we should never look at them as like, oh, that's too many for me. I can't overcome it. I love what Joseph Smith said, that unless God was merciful and gracious, slow to anger, long-suffering, and full of goodness, such is the weakness of human nature, and so great the frailties and imperfections of men, that unless they believe that these excellencies existed in the divine character, they could not have faith necessary to salvation. For doubt would take the place of faith. And those who would know their weakness and liability to sin, all of us, for sure me, would be in constant doubt of salvation if they were not for if it were not for the idea that the, which they have of the excellency of the character of God, that he is slow to anger, long suffering, and of a forgiving disposition, and does forgive iniquity, transgression, and sin. Having an idea of these facts does away with the doubt and makes faith exceedingly strong. And I didn't intend to share that, but I just feel to share that that. It is so important for us to to be all in and know that we can be a part of what's ahead. To not feel like, you know, well, that person, those people, like they've done a lot of things through their life. They're sure that they're, you know, they they've been um consecrated a long time ago. This is the moment right now. The vilest of sinners became the greatest of missionaries. Alma the younger. I mean, we there's a list, right? Saul the Paul. It, this is the time right now to turn. And I, I I constantly think about, you know, what in what you said, Megan, at the beginning of this question, that it is better to be humbled than to be compelled, right? To, to choose. It is so much more powerful for us to let go of the world before the world is wrenched away from us anyway. If we can right now let go while it's still abundant, Babylon and its trinkets are still everywhere. If we can do that now, I promise you that no matter what you face, no matter what 
hardships or what loss that might be there, or what difficult things in this short we window. It's not, we're not going into Mad Max for a hundred years. That's not how we should look at this. But when, no matter what we face in this short window, our heart will not be attached to what is actually being destroyed, which is Babylon. Our heart will already be in the millennium. We've been told by President Benson that as soon as we're we're there and we can take those heartstrings and cut them from Satan, where that person is already living in the millennium. And, and, and so we're preparing for the terrestrial. We're preparing for his coming. We can see through those things, but this is the time to let go. And I guess one other thing I'll say real quickly is that for those who have, which is everyone, I already know before I say this, but who have loved ones who you're like, they're not ready and they're, and they just won't hear me. And I've shared things I've been prompted to share. I'll tell you that I hear over and over again in my head, sometimes when I'm talking to people, they need the calamities. Some people will need them. I mean, we all need them in a way, but our call is to be sanctified, to be consecrated before. But it's also to not fear or have despair for our brothers and sisters. And sometimes, you know, our, our immediate families, if they are not there yet, there will be major heart softening in that those first harvest harvests. And, you know, when you look at Revelation, it says, you know, for the season, I won't say that it's an exact because we don't know, but it says five months that they were that that um, the destroying angels were let loose and they are destroying things and they are causing um, things to happen, which is really cleansing when it comes to those natural things. But it said that the that those who do not have the seal in their forehead are tormented for five months, but not killed. Right. And that doesn't mean we know that is something that's figurative in terms of like not everything being maybe falling apart uh, completely. But this season of softening, I just feel like it's really important for us to realize that we don't need to have, we don't need to lose hope for those that aren't. We need to personally look and say, I'm doing, I'm all in. And I don't need to be like, oh, you know, you have to be all in now. Um, unless you're prompted to say that, some people will just need the, the calamities and we will be ready to help them. And as Polly said, like, they will look to, to us because they'll see that we bore witness, that we that we warned when it was time, and that that as things get worse, um, we'll have an opportunity to be missionaries to be able to help them to come closer to Him. But there will be great mercy in the calamities. I pray for the calamities every day, and that sounds maybe crazy, but what ha is happening right now is spiritual heart failure. And what Ezekiel says that, is that those that that um, the, the righteous will sigh and cry for the abominations that are, that are being done. And we've been told that the, the righteous will pray day and night um, for deliverance and essentially for, for his judgment, which is cleansing. And so, you know, I think that's a wonderful time that's ahead to recognize that that's a missionary opportunity. And there's layers of it. And it culminates with the mission of the 144,000 to take them out of the holes in the dark places. But um, we're going to see that as soon as things get bad, Instead of just thinking of, oh, I need to help them to survive, or I need to help them with with uh, these temporal things, it's an opportunity to be um, abish, right? To be to be out there and to saying, this is what's happening. You know, as, as Tiff and Paul said, this this is what's going on. This is what um, this means. Look forward with gladness, and we'll have those opportunities to the extent that we consecrate ourselves right now, and that we. Um, we uh, open our mouths whenever we're prompted with our brothers and sisters. I'd like to just uh, share a quick testimony that I know that the answer for everything is Jesus Christ. And I <clears throat> have felt very strongly impressed that the, the answer for surviving spiritually is binding ourselves to Christ. I've been thinking about what does that mean, binding ourselves to Christ? Well, we bind ourselves through covenants. And through those covenants and through uh, loyalty to them, Christ's power will begin to flow through us. <clears throat> and the scriptures teach that light cleaves to light. And so the way to bind ourselves to Christ is to be filled with as much light as we possibly can. And I think that's where the temple comes in, to be in a place of light as often as you possibly can. And you'll find yourself being, experiencing uh, having been bound to Christ. 
well said. Um, I just wanted to end for with a scripture, first revelation, um, with my testimony. Um, said his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun was as the sun shineth in his strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Um, I just, I, I didn't know those scriptures until after this dream and, and I just fell upon them after that dream happened. And that to me is a miracle, um, that the heavens are open and that God wants to speak to us. It, it lets us and reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. And when things get really, really dark and everything is in shadow, he is our light. He is our life. He is everything. And as we cling to him and and run to him, like Polly said, and um, just be his, um, we will be made alive. And he has conquered uh, a death for us. So um, we don't have to fear the future. Um, and, and what happens with our families and ourselves, we don't have to fear. And uh, I'm so grateful. Um, that he said, fear not, I am the first and the last. And for me, that's kind of like the Aleph and the Tav, right? But also, um, those are symbols of covenants. Um, the beginning of a covenant and the end of a covenant. But I don't think there's ever an end in a covenant. Um, and so it just makes me ponder more on what Alpha and Omega mean and the first and the last. Anyhow, um, more to think about. But do you see how the spirit works? Um you ponder upon revelation and receive more, and then you want more. So we ask questions, and the Spirit just keeps feeding us and uh, until it burns within us. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity, so grateful for um, God putting us together, that we can combine and, um, and, and share our voice and find our voice. And I say that name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you to each of you for the testimonies that you have uh, bared today. It strikes me, you know, the last couple of comments when we were talking about light and doing all that we can to gather as much light as possible leading up to this event and past it and through it and beyond into whatever it is that the Lord has in store for all of us. And it's important for us to know and you each are a wonderful, beautiful example of this, is that while there will come a time when light is not going to be accessible externally, there's going to come a time, I believe, again, when the temples are not going to be open. There's going to come a time when the sun hides his face and there is darkness, literal and figurative. And in that moment, you have to learn to find the light inside of you because that is the light of Christ. Christ is a being, he is God and he is coming, but he starts right here. He starts in our hearts and you each are a beautiful example of tuning into that as you rely on the light of Christ that's already in you. And as you receive the Holy ghost, you start to see that you start to see there's light inside of me. I can receive revelation about true things that I have no right to know because I didn't Google them and I'm not an expert on these things <laughs> at all, but it comes and there's this knowing and there are angels surrounding us that are tutoring us all the time and light cleaves into light and you grow and you grow in that until the perfect day. And that perfect day is the day of the second coming, not 
the second coming of Christ to the Mount of Olives, but the day of the second coming of Jesus Christ to you. And he comes to you because you have been made like him, because you have submitted to his process of refinement, because you have not let a broken heart go to waste, but you have laid it on the altar and said, Lord, you broke my heart and that's okay. Have, have the rest of me, whatever, whatever you require, whatever you need me to go through, I'll suffer, whatever it is, because that's what Jesus Christ did. He suffered everything that was required of him. And that is what will be required of us too, if we want to become like him. The good news is, is that unlike him, we won't be suffering alone. And we already see these beautiful threads, the miracles, the people that Christ will bring into our lives, into our stories to teach us and verify that we're not insane, <laughs> that there are mm-hmm. other people that are on this journey as well that are learning it. Um, we start to see that more and more. I wanted to close with just an observation from Doctrine and Covenants 88, which is such a doctrinally heavy, beautiful chapter, but the Lord is talking about his eminent return and the end of the time of the Gentiles. And he is saying how he is going to call many from among the Gentiles to declare his words, to cry repentance and to prepare the saints against the hour of judgment prior to the hour of judgment. And he says that once that testimony has been born by his people, then will come other testimonies, the testimonies of the calamities, those invitations for us to humble ourselves and turn to him. Well, in this instance, be humbled and then turn to him. And I love the verse in verse 92, because there are two invitations that are being given at the same time. And what we are doing now, what we've been discussing in in this conversation And what we invite you to do is to decide which invitation is going to come to you. So this is verse 92. It says, and the angel shall fly through the midst of heaven, crying with a loud voice, sounding the trump of God, saying, invitation one, prepare ye, prepare ye, O inhabitants of the earth, for the judgment of our God is come. And then it goes on to give the second invitation. Behold, and lo, the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him. It is my greatest wish and desire. And I think I can speak for those on this panel as well to be the recipient of the second invitation to be prepared to receive the bridegroom for he is coming. And perhaps we are wrong on the time frame of some of these things that will be to coming to pass But that's really okay, because the fact of the matter is that he is coming. And if we can meet him earlier because of our own individual preparation, all the better. Thank you to each of you participating on this panel for the testimonies that you have borne, for your willingness to share your inspiration in a way that was appropriate and guided by the Spirit. And again, we extend the invitation to all of you listening to go and find out for yourselves. Go ask the Lord. The Lord loves to answer if we are willing only to ask. And we bear that witness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us on the Spiritual Survival Podcast. Again, if the mission of our podcast resonates with you, please click subscribe, like, and share this content.